Good evening, everyone. My name is Jeremy Duncan. I'm your host of the TXK Conversations, a part of the TXK State of Mind podcast. Tonight, we're going to be hosting our fifth episode. We started in January. We now are getting ready to move into March. We got one day left in the month of love. And so we wanted to end that with the lady you see around town, but you don't know her face. If you do, you see her work. Uh, some of the best work that you may have seen around as it relates to art and murals. Um, known to many, uh, celebrated by a lot. I'd like to introduce Mr. Darlene uh, uh, Annette Taylor. She's the Texas County Muralist. And we're going to be on here talking about uh, her work, her passion, her vision, and all the things that it takes to become a muralist. Uh, Miss Darlene, welcome to the stage. Hello. Yes, ma'am. So first off, I'm really glad you're here with us this evening. I've admired your work from afar for quite some time now. So I'm having an having opportunity to interview tonight is a real honor for me. It's a great honor. I'm familiar with, I work with your work. Like I said, I see it around town. I see it on Facebook. But I want our audience, the audience that's online that don't know who you are, uh, to be introduced to you, to learn about you, learn about your work, to learn about your vision. So tell us a little bit about yourself. How did you get started in the world of art and murals? Well, uh, I've been drawing since I was little, but I stopped when I was a teenager. And so uh, my mother taught me how to, to draw and to paint. Okay. Uh, but, you know, I didn't think of anything about it, you know, because uh, right. who does? When your kid's drawing on the wall, you don't think too much about it. I know, you better stop that. Huh? <laughs> yeah, you better stop that. They, they beat it out of you. Yeah. And so uh, I got hit a lot when I was a kid. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, well, I grew up, you know, I got regular jobs. I went out into the workforce. I had my son and got married. And, well, I got married and had my son. And uh, just had a regular everyday life, you know, before I started painting murals. I worked at a deli. And I did that for eight years. And then before that, I worked. Uh, and during that, I worked at Lowe's uh, okay. uh, Home Improvement. I did that as a front end manager. So I had regular jobs like anyone else. And one year I met this crazy, crazy mixed up kind of dude who got mm -hmm. me, you know, you know, right. you always run into that one person that gets you, gets you crazy. Yes, you know, you, you find somebody that tolerates your, your, your brand of crazy. <laughs> And yeah, I, I have one of those. <laughs> yeah, and and I did, but unfortunately, after we got married, he passed away. Yes, ma'am. And he passed away in, in March, March twenty seventh of two thousand nineteen. And I just didn't know what to do with myself. I just kind of puttered around the house and and went into a depression. Uh, but my son, God bless him, he said, "You need to do something. Get outside. Do something." And so right. I decided to paint the house. Well, my husband, Andy, his name was Andy. And he collected every kind of paint known to man. If it was a dollar and on sale, he bought it. <laughs> and so I had all of these gallons of cheap paint around the house. So I said, well, you know, I'll paint the house. But I couldn't find two colors that were the same. I don't know what, <laughs> what he did, but he bought every oops color. And not one can was the same. So I said, well, I got all of these colors. I'll, I'll paint something on the house. So I decided right. to, to paint a mural on the house. And while I was painting, a Facebook friend of mine, who I didn't know was a reporter for Texarkana Gazette. Uh, her name was mm -hmm. uh, Katie Stone. And okay. she stopped because she lived down the street around the corner. And she saw that. I was painting this. She said, what are you doing? I said, I'm painting a mural. And she was like, that is fabulous. I got to do a story. And I had a Victorian wedding. And so I okay. had made a Victorian dress for my wedding. She asked me to put it on because she knew that I did costumes and anime and, and cosplay and, and such. And she said she's going to do this whole story about my costumes and my mural painting. But at the time, mm -hmm. I never painted a mural before. Right. And so uh, I went, got to put on my wedding dress, and she took a bunch of pictures and did an interview with me, sat down, talked with me, left, you know. And, 
And you know how you, you forget? Well, I forgot. <laughs> and a month later, I'm on the cover of, of her magazine. Wow. And Katie has done this fantastic story about me and my costumes. But more importantly, the fact that I paint murals, right. which I didn't do. <laughs> but, I, I, but I was doing, you know, I was doing. I was painting this mural on the side of the house. And so uh, Irma Wright from The Hideout and El Frio, her and her husband, saw it and asked me, because they knew me from Lowe's, asked right. me to paint at their businesses. So El Frio, I started there first, and I painted okay. nine, nine murals there. And then I went to Broad Street to the hideout and I painted their entire establishment there. And, you know, I, I got nominated for Remarkable Woman of the Year from Shreveport Channel 6. And I got a, uh, a few more mentions in newspapers and magazines. Mm -hmm. And I thought, well, that's just it. I'll, I'll never do anything else. But more murals kept coming in. Uh, job You're busy. Yeah, I, I, I suddenly couldn't work anymore. I had so many job offers for murals that I didn't have time to go to work anymore. Right. I was, I was painting early in the mornings, late at night, and still going to work full time. So I decided, you know, it's getting really busy. And I, I was actually getting known because people were coming into the deli, and it was Julie's Deli, right? coming into the de deli and said, I see your mural. <laughs> and, I was, and I need you to paint something for me. And so I was doing so much of that that uh, Julie and I just went, you know what? I think it's time you just went off and, and did your murals. And January 1st, 2021, I left Julie's Deli and started full time painting murals. I haven't stopped since. Wow, you've been rocking and rolling. I've, I've seen stuff from from Vivian to all the way to Oklahoma to everywhere that you've been putting your mules. Yeah, uh, houses, I'm in, businesses, everywhere. Yeah. I'm in 39 cities in six states. So, how would you describe your style, your identity of your art? I call it impressionist because I'm a dabber. Up close, it just looks like a lot of dots and dashes. Far away mm -hmm. is where my murals take shape because it all blends together. But up close, it's a hot mess. <laughs> 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 so, so I'm an impressionist artist. Uh, okay. I, I, I did consider myself as a street artist and a graffiti, but now mm -hmm. it's gone into art. So I've had to teach myself how to paint large okay. with 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 on that topic and then thinking about how you started when your husband passed and you found all those different paints what is your process for creating a mural so i know you had all the different paints do you have like to sit down and brainstorm do you do well think, yeah think, well, cover set? yeah i have a strange philosophy the wall will tell you what it wants okay so everyone always wants me to sketch out something and I go, no, just find a picture and, and I'll I won't copy it, but I'll paint in that style, in that subject matter. Uh, gotcha. I prefer that people just go, I need a bunch of mushrooms and a dog running through the woods and, <laughs> and let me paint it. Right. Uh, but a lot of people don't trust me to do that enough. They want to have an image. They want to see what it's going to look like. They want to put their hands, you know, uh, they want to rub it, it. And, you know, and smell it and make sure that it's uh, that it's what they like. When I go, just trust me, it's going to look great. Right. right. Uh, I do have software. Uh, I have editing software that I can use to I take a picture of the wall, the actual wall, and I okay. superimpose my ideas on that wall and I send it to the customer so that they can actually see what the image is going to look like on the actual wall in real life. Okay. That's, that's very interesting. Mm -hmm. So, um, I mean, thinking about that, what are some of the main things you're excited about or passionate about when you're doing your work? You get different jobs all the time. So what yes. are some of the things that you're excited about or you have been excited about? Cranes. <laughs> <laughs> when, when someone says, 
oh, it's, it's 30 feet up. I said, oh, man, you're going to need a crane. You're going to need a lift. Got that scissor lift. Yeah. And and I'm uh, at Lowe's, we learned how to uh, run forklifts and lifts and, and uh, cherry pickers. And so I am trained in all of these different equipment. Right. And I always wondered, why was I spending eight years at Lowe's learning how to ride a forklift? <laughs> and so now I know, you yeah. know, all that training has prepared right. me for for uh, cranes and, and cherry pickers and, and uh, scissor lifts. Who knew? All right. You, you, you were preparing for your new career. Yeah. I, you know, and uh, I was OSHA certified there because everyone has to be OSHA aware. Uh, right. And so I know safety rules. I know what I would need to get from here to there. It, it's great because all of this information that I got from working at Lowe's helped me so much in what I do now. Okay. Recently, you unveiled one of your most impressive works of art during the celebration of Otis Williams and the Temptations. Talk to us a little, about, little bit about that process and how that came about. Well, it started for me three years ago. Okay. And I was approached by uh, a member of the Otis Williams family. And she wanted to have a mural painted in downtown Texarkana. But they hadn't picked a wall. They didn't have an artist. And I was at the time painting the Proud to be from here Texarkana mural for Windstream, Kinetic. Right. I love that one. And uh, that one is, to, to, to this date, is still my largest mural. That That's one nice. is, is uh, 37 feet by 178 feet. Wow. And so I was painting that one. And they, I guess, because I was doing something so impressive, that they say, okay, she's the person. Right. And I went, yes, I'd love to, you know, get get a wall, get a time, and set it up. And uh, it took three years. <laughs> wow. It's they actually had artist. an artist. Yeah, you know, they had another artist to create a design, but um, the city didn't like his design. It's not they didn't like it. They didn't think it would fit on that wall. Right. And they were right because it was a square design and the wall is rectangle so it would mm -hmm. not have fit on that wall right and so they asked me to come up with uh a separate design and i did i came up with 47 of them <laughs> and i think i sent in like five or six at a time uh mm -hmm. and some people like one and some people like another and someone didn't like any of them and Right. And so it just kind of progressed into the one that we have now. And the city loved it. Everyone loves it. And even Perot, because they were also uh, a big factor in deciding what goes on that wall. The owner of the wall, which is Ghost Star Finance, they right. loved it. And so the one that you see now is the one that was picked by everyone. Uh, unanimous, unanimous. No, I can't say it. You got it. I understand. <laughs> yeah. My, my Arkansas is it. mixing up with my Texas. <laughs> I got you. Hey, it's Twin City, so you got to do both. Switch yeah. back and forth. <laughs> and so uh, so the city and everyone approved it. And uh, I got Lowe's because I am acquainted with, with everyone there. And I have a history with everyone there. I petitioned to have Lowe's to pay for the paint. And Vaspar generously uh, donated paint for the mural. They donated 37 gallons. Wow. And I know you did this predominantly by yourself, right? Or did you have any? Yeah, I, I did the two-thirds of it by myself. Of course, I supervised on the last third. The part where the Grammys are mm -hmm. was painted by Richard, which is Rich Art. And then, of course, Colton Baker helped me. And... Uh, and my friend Paige, and I can't remember Paige's, uh, she's going to get me, Paige's last <laughs> name. But Paige, uh, Colton and Paige actually helped me with the four states mural. Okay. And so I love the way that they painted. I love the way that they work. We met at Universal Vibe, which is Universal Vibe. Okay. And uh, I was a sponsor for, I was one of the sponsors at Universal Vibe. And so... I met them there and they are fantastic artists and they just wanted to know more about 
how to paint murals, what kind of paint to use. And I've kind of considered myself as a mentor. I love helping young people getting to the business, getting to art. Uh, And so I had them to come and help me to paint it to see so that they could see what it's like to paint something that size. Okay. Yeah, it's wonderful. I know do a part of my my podcast. I do my little drive around cruising with JD. <laughs> so I'm often I'm often in downtown because I'm trying to see what's new going on. I want to catch the the gentleman that's building his home down there now. I think that's yeah. so exciting. And I often make circles through there just to kind of get a feel for how my show is going to go and get some ideas of who I should talk to. And all the time I go through there by the temptations mural and it's just like it catches your eye you just gotta stop you can see it from an airplane wow yeah it's nice it's nice it's really nice i wanted to touch on one thing that you talked about earlier when you're creating art and some like some of your customers or the people that commission them they want to kind of feel or touch you kind of have a say in the work that you do but when you're creating art or being commissioned to create art and work in a public space once you're done like you said the gold star they own the wall who actually owns the artwork after the project is complete? Do you still own the copyright? It is the what? artist. Uh, okay. The art, all art created by an artist is owned by the artist unless they sign a. Um, it's basically a, a contract that says that I sign over copyrights to whoever that commissions a, a work for art is what it's called. And on um, this particular mural, no work for art contract was signed. So it actually is my art. But what I do with all of my murals, because it's actually in my contract that Mm -hmm. uh, the the original art is mine, but the person can use it for whatever. If they want to make t-shirts or postcards, or if they want to make calendars, they're more than welcome to use that mural in any way, shape or form that they want to. In fact, anyone can. So if you go up to the Proud to Be From Here, Texarkana, a lot of companies uh, stand their mascot, like uh, home health care. They stand right. their mascot in front of it. Schools have taken their class pictures in front of it. I make it where everyone can use it. Okay. That's yeah. good. The reason I ask because I have I have an expiring, aspiring artist running around here. With me and my daughter, and she, one yes. of the things that she, she talked about is uh, intellectual property law and uh, with it, artists because they want to make sure. Uh, yeah. It's a it's a quagmire, really, because you can use a piece of art if you change it, like you make it all purple or something. It's kind of like the the Campbell soup cans right. with Andy Rohal, and mm-hmm. he made them all different. So that he wouldn't have to pay Campbell Soup, right? And so uh, you can still recognize it as what it is. It's just that it's so different that it's considered art now. Okay. And so you, when I get a mural, and the customer gives me a particular art piece, I have to go. Well, yeah, I can paint that, but it won't be that. I can mm-hmm. paint the theme of it, but it won't be that. And so I have to change it or embellish it so that it's something that I painted and not a copy of what someone has already made and is that copy. Right. right. You always want to put your own personal touch on it. When you're yeah. creating your when you're creating your artwork on your murals, what are your biggest motivations or what inspires you? Are you listening to music or you have some special quotes that you're you're thinking about as you're working? Well, uh I work in silence. <laughs> it's weird. I like I like the air noise and car noise. It's it's almost like uh, they have a they have a word for it. It's brown noise. That's what it is. Not white noise. It's brown noise. And so it's the cars going by and and the airplanes flying over, the wind blowing. I like silence when I paint. Uh, that is mostly just because I'm ADHD. So I have all kinds of conversations in my head oh i need to go pay the light bill do i need to do this i need to get that purple out the car i need a different brush this brush is not working i I have this going on in my brain at all times so music just messes it up yeah you sound like my baby girl she said she she, her art is like a point of peace for her yeah relax and focus yeah it's my number i i I relax i focus it's 
it makes me stress free when I paint. That's you say the same thing. It's a point of relaxation for. Her. Yeah, that's great. I told her she need to come down and talk to you. She works over at yes, Cafe, Lu yes, please. Cafe Lucille. Yeah, so I told her she need to come in there and talk to you sometimes. Yes, please. Uh, uh, when I um, do stuff in the summer, I usually have classes in the summer at the track. So I do the the summer uh, summer camp where we okay. uh, paint in summer camp at the museum, and then I also do lectures, mm -hmm. and I also do different um mentorships when i'm painting so right. i i let anyone come and paint with me and mm -hmm. i teach them the process of painting murals so i know when we first we jumped on this even before we got on to the live part of it uh you got on and i've been noticing today you've been over at morris painting the mural so yeah so one of my questions was as we look at look in the educational sphere uh, the focus of the arts has taken a little hit over the past few years, whatever, taking arts out of the school. So I wanted to ask you, what's the role of art and artists in today's society? Because, you know, they're taking the thing that you love, my daughter loves, and a lot of kids and adults love out of the schools. So what do you see the role of art and artists in today's society? Well, art shaped my life. Uh, I'm 54. So I remember the days where you had to take art. You had to take right. uh, B, music. B, e, e, music. Oh, music. I, I miss music so much. And right. all of these, uh, because it taught kids, first off, how to count when you had to do the 4 4, your 2 4. Yeah. Uh, it also taught perspective. I had an art teacher in high school. I went to ODY in Fort Worth. And I had an art teacher who got me into drafting. And so, and I did 3D art. And he inspired all of the kids to, to draw whatever they wanted to do, to express themselves either in clay or plaster in Paris or, or fabrics or knit or, you know, just to, to create. And now kids don't get to create anymore. They, they sit in front of a computer all day. Yeah, sitting by the computer all day. Yeah, no, now it's getting it to the point where kids don't even write anymore. They, they're tired. Right. right. That's why. That's one of the things I always taught my daughters to make sure they learn how to do a cursive writing, mm -hmm. uh, know how to know how to set up a letter, block format or semi block, so they'll be able to be able oh, to. Oh yeah. Function oh yeah. You know, yeah. Uh, build out a paragraph diagram. Right. Series. Right. So this this really been a very informative interview because I wanted to get uh, people's understanding of all the work you do in the community, all the things that you do. I know uh, I've been down to track and I know that you've been in there, you work in the front, you know, you're- Yes, I actually wear historical costumes when I work. Yeah. yeah, I remember that when I came in one day. So, um, and I want to give people opportunity to kind of see what's going on in the community, who are the people that they can get connected because there's a lot of uh, artists that they may not feel confident in what they're doing right now. They may think that people may not uh, be understand receptive to them. their work. Yeah, yeah, understand them. And just to see your history, your your path to what you're doing, because you, you started as a young kid and drawing, like you said, doing pencil drawings, and then now you progress to you know, I think yeah. I call you the mural queen of, of <laughs> Northeast well, and Southwest I think Arkansas. I, I was referred to as a mural lady uh, <laughs> several times, the mural lady. And I, whenever I go into like a business or something, I've had people actually spot my car and run inside and go, I saw your car outside. I knew you was in here. And so uh, I love that. I love that people are free to come up to me and take pictures with me. I love it. I've done it for so many years uh, doing Renaissance fairs and cosplay that I'm used to uh, that kind of interaction. Uh, I just want people to know that there's there's lots of things going on in Texarkana for art. Like right, right. now, uh, Track is signing up students for the Student Jurit Art Show. They still have two weeks uh, to apply for that. I, I actually have a link on my page where, okay. uh, or you can go to uh, the track website, which is trahc.org, 
and they can sign up for the student art show. It's for kindergarten to the 12th grade. You don't have to apply through your school. You can actually just submit your uh, art. Your daughter could submit her art uh, and have it accepted for the art show. Also, uh, first Fridays downtown on Broad Street, all of the artists come out and and it's not just people who paint, mm -hmm. but it's crafters, it's musicians, it's people with food, uh, sewing, everything. If you create anything, you can sell, you can set up a table and sell your art and your crafts and your whatever else, just set up a tent and a table. And or if you play the guitar, the violin, you can, or you have a little band, you can set up on a corner and play your music live, and it's great. It, a lot of people don't know about it. It's first right. Friday. It's been going on for three, three years now. Mm -hmm. And uh, the next one is March eighth, and it's okay. from six to nine downtown on Broad Street in Olive. Okay. And we set up all up and down the street. I'll be there. I'll be in historical costume, of course. And uh, my friends will all be there as well. Joseph Raymond opens up his studio. And he has uh, live painting as well in front of his studio as well. as Sometimes he paints as well. Okay. And you can see the process of art live. It's great. And you can come out and participate as well. It's not mm -hmm. just for the us, us hoardy toity folks. You, you, yeah. Everyone is invited to come out and set up and and paint live as well. I had a question for you from the from my uh, my chat box from Facebook. Yes, uh, they were asking about the uh, celebration. Are you doing anything with maybe doing a mural of the celebration glasses somewhere? Well, you know, uh, they did do a contest for that, and. Uh, I think it was the buildings, the drawing the buildings, okay. but unfortunately, I, I my AutoCAD is terrible, right. <laughs> and I don't do straight lines, and so <laughs> I didn't. I, I let other people do that one. I did win for the Texarkana 150th Spirit Award. Okay. Uh, I won that at uh, 1894 Gallery for the the. I guess that's my only celebration thing that I've done. I, I did an, a piece of artwork called The Ice Cream Man is Coming. Okay, and, I need to check that out. Yeah, I've seen you a picture of it. Uh, the original art is sold. So okay. uh, I don't have it. I don't have the original art anymore, but I do have posters of it. And I'll okay. have posters of it uh, on March 8th when we do the Friday, the Friday first Friday. Okay, that's great. Usually before we close, I like to give you an opportunity to kind of let people know how they can get get in touch with you, to seek out your services. How, you know, do you got do you have Facebook? How do you market yourself so people can get in touch with you? I have a little bit of everything. So I have an Instagram. I also have a TikTok. I have Facebook, of course. I have my my regular Facebook, which is my personal Facebook, which is the Darlene Annette Taylor. But I also have the Darlene Annette I mean, the Darlene Taylor Murals Facebook page, okay. my business page. I also have a YouTube channel, so you can go on YouTube. And on YouTube, I've started posting uh, me painting murals on there okay. and giving advice. Uh, it started off, my YouTube channel was for my costumes. And so now it's switched over. <laughs> it's switched over to painting. Uh, and also, you can... Email me at murals txk at uh, gmail.com, which is m u r a l s t x k at gmail. And then also you can call me, well, text me because I get weird phone calls sometimes. <laughs> well, like right. everyone do. So text me. Uh, it's really easy 903 417 4954. Text me the size of the wall, a picture of the wall, and then when you would like to get started. Okay. And, but unfortunately, usually I'm booked about four to six weeks out. Like right now, I'm taking orders for the middle of April. Wow, you're busy. You're a busy lady. I, I, I cruise, and I got a cruise coming. 
I'm, hey, I'm gonna yeah. go on a cruise on the 17th, so I have 14 murals to get finished by the 17th. Wow, you're gonna be rocking and rolling then. I think if I do one a day, I get finished. So you can do a whole entire mural in a day. Yes. Wow. Uh, I typically can get one done anywhere between a day to about two weeks. Usually that's the longest that I, the average long time is two weeks. Uh, the temptations was unusual. Right. That one was six weeks. Still, that's a good turnaround though. Yes. Uh, especially for painting most of it by myself. Right. Yeah. You do a lot of that. By, I, I remember drive by seeing you on that scissors lift. <laughs> No, man, that thing's dangerous. Uh, I, I'm a big girl, and and scissor lifts, I don't know what it is, but they are not made for, for big girls and, and five gallons of paint. It's right. not made for it. Uh, I like cranes better. They're more steady. Uh, I don't like anything that wobbles. I'm not That's a weak wobble. I don't want to fall down. I got you. I got you. Well, Miss Darlene, it's been a pleasure interviewing you this evening on the TXK Conversations. Uh, I know we got a lot of people that they seen your work and now they know the person. Yeah. Uh, I really appreciate you. So what we're going to do is I'm going to make sure all your information that you provided, I'm going to have that as part of the credit. So if you're listening, if you're out there, if you watch the rerun of this, as soon as you go through, you're going to be able to get all the information that you need to be able to get in touch, contact with Darlene Murals. Uh, Taylor Mules to get you set up to have some of her wonderful work grace your home or your business. So yeah. again, Texarkana, this is TX Conversations, and what is your state of mind? Thank you. Bye. <laughs>